trying to buy furniture, a mattress, even a car in the last few months has faced long wait times or delays. That's because there's a foam shortage, one of the key components in making a lot of things we use every day. ABC 10 News reporter Jared Aaron takes an in-depth look at why it's happening and how local businesses are working through it to help customers get what they want. It's been a roller coaster to, to, to say the least. At Great House in Miramar, co-owner Paul Reese says the last 16 months have been a whirlwind. First, the pandemic shut down the store. Then when they reopened last May, we ended up doing uh, over a month's worth of business in a little less than two weeks. It hasn't slowed down since. Normally, that's a good problem to have. But while business boomed, a foam shortage meant supply couldn't keep up. Custom furniture that usually took four to six weeks to deliver was taking twice as long. So it's just this whole trickle, you know, down effect. And at the end of the day, you know, it affects the end consumer. The shortage is a result of what industry experts call an unfortunate confluence of events. To understand it, you really have to know a little bit about the supply chain economics of the industry. Foam producers follow a theory called just in time delivery, meaning they only make as much as they need. That saves money by eliminating overstock and storage. Basically, they estimate how much people are going to buy. But when the pandemic started, they guessed low. Based on that guess, the Polyurethane Foam Association says production drastically dropped in March, April and May of 2020. But they guessed wrong. Demand went up as people stuck at home wanted to redecorate. So foam production skyrocketed through the summer and fall to try and catch up, peaking in September and October, the industry's holiday shopping season. Then winter storm Uri hit in February and it knocked out nearly all of the major foam production plants in the U.S., causing another huge drop in supply. The industry is still playing catch up. So it wasn't like being able to flip a switch and get back to 100 percent. Russ Batson, the executive director of the Polyurethane Foam Association, told ABC 10 News he expects things to get back to normal this fall. In the meantime, Reese at Great House says he and other businesses that rely on foam are doing their best to manage customer expectations. We'd rather be upfront with them and just let them know that, you know, it could be 12 weeks or it could be 16 weeks in certain cases, depending on uh, the item that they're choosing. And we do our best to keep them informed. Other stores we spoke with say they've had to get creative selling floor models or even expanding their inventory. Reese says he hasn't had to go that far. His advice to anyone looking for foam dependent products, be patient. You know, get what you want because you're gonna be looking at it, using it, enjoying it for years and years and years to come. Jared Ahrens, ABC 10 News. If you'd like to dive a little deeper into the specific numbers, we posted all of them on our website, 10news.com. And if you have a story that you think requires an in-depth look, just send us an email. There's the address, tips at 10news.com.